Contents 1. What is Tao? 2. The difference between Tao and religions. 3. The relationship between Tao and man. 4. The purpose of acquiring Tao. 5. The four requisites of Tao cultivation. 6. The advantage of practicing Tao. 7. What is the third white stage disaster? 8. The systematic spreading of real Tao. 9. The secret spreading of precious Tao. 10. The steps after Tao acceptance. 11. Meritorious presentation in the cultivation. 12. The comparison between the sage and the ordinary. 13. Virtuous practice and wisdom cultivation. 14. Rules and regulations in Tao cultivation. 15. Bitterness creates Buddhahood. 16. Personal conduct in Tao cultivation. 17. Progress in Tao cultivation. 1. What is Tao? Tao is the great highway, the original nature, the real image and the great truth of man. Tao endows every one of us with eternal spirits which is our true selves. Tao is also the cosmic power that creates and dominates all visible and audible objects in the whole universe. All things owed their origins to Tao, it causes them to grow and develop to the fullest extent of their utility. It is serene, tranquil, boundless, formless, and all-powerful and it brings the whole universe in a harmonious order. According to Confucianism, Tao is the natural goodness of man's heart. Supramundane Buddha Nature in Buddhism The Door to the Undying According to Taoists Although there are many definitions, they all arise from one and coverage at the same point. Lao Tzu said, I do not know its name, but designate it the Tao. Arbitrarily forcing a name on it, I call it the Great. Since Tao is invisible and shapeless, it is symbolized by an unbroken circle O, a forcibly limited symbol in view of the limitation of the human mind. The unbroken circle O represents the Tao in quietness whereas a line underscore represents the Tao in action. When the Tao is in activity, the unbroken circle becomes a line and when elongated it would become the longest line. Indeed, Tao is the greatest of all because it dominated everything. But, if the line is shortened, it will become a dot. In other words, Tao can also be the smallest of all. Tao is universal, when dwelled in heaven, it is called the natural or heavenly, when dwelled in earth, it is called geography, when dwelled in material, it is called the principle of that material, and when dwelled in the form of human being, it is the conscience of that person. To follow the dictates of his nature in action is Tao, i.e. the highway for man. If one maintains a cautious watch over oneself, one will come to be identified with heaven and earth. That which heaven entrusts to man is to be called his nature. The following out of his nature is to be called the way, Tao. The building up of the way is to be called spiritual culture. Since man's nature is what heaven has given into his change, and since following the dictates of this nature is the Tao for man, it follows that the Tao of man is also the Tao of heaven, that the virtue, te, of man is also the virtue of heaven. Reaching to the height of the virtue of heaven, we many say of the man who only knows the virtue of man as the virtue of man, that his sphere of living can only be the moral sphere. But the sphere in which the man lives who knows that the virtue of man is also the virtue of heaven, that is the transcendent sphere. There, Tao means the Tao of heaven. All this is an attempt to state clearly the origin of man's nature and the connection of it with heaven. Heaven producing the teeming multitude. As there are things, there are their specific principles. 
This means that at the very time when a person is born, heaven has already given him his nature. Man's nature is no thing but principles. In the book of Confucius, the mean, it says, if my moral character is not adequate to overcome material force, then there is nothing to do but to submit to material force as endowed by heaven. If my moral character is adequate to overcome material force, however, then what I receive from the endowment is all moral character. Therefore, if I investigate principle to the utmost and fully develop my nature, then what I have received is holy heaven's principle. If one investigates principle to the utmost and fully develops his nature, then his nature will be in accord with the character of heaven and his destiny will be in accord with the principle of heaven. Therefore, pure form and pure actuality is a god. The original nature, Tao, of all living things is immanent, formless, invisible and eternal. It manifests itself in form and disappears again in formlessness, it does not act, it does not talk, it is fathomless and inexhaustible source of all life, it is strictly impersonal. Tao by its nature is inexplicable by words. Speech by its very nature cannot express the Absolute. This is the character of Tao. Tao is so great that it is not be seen and to be named. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Tao cannot be name of and the Tao which is named is not Tao. The truth may be told is not the everlasting truth. The name given to a thing is not the everlasting name. Above all, the one important message of Tao is the oneness and spirituality of the material universe. Tao covers heaven and supports earth. It is the extent of the four quarters of the universe and the dimensions of the eight points of the firmament. There is no limit to its height and its depth is unfathomable. It encloses heaven and earth and endows things, with their nature, before they have been formed. Compressed, it can expand. Hidden, it can be manifest. Weak, it can be strong. Soft, it can be firm. With it, the mountain becomes high and the abyss becomes deep. Because of it, animals run and birds fly. The sun and the moon shine and the planets revolve by it. Tau is also broad and level not far from person and the seeker finds it is himself. Pressure on it will move it and touching it or feeling after it will bring a response. As a fish forgets its relative existence in the river and lakes, so men forget themselves in their relation to the way and to Tao. After having been polished and cut, it returns to simplicity. It acts without action and is in accord with Tao. It does not speak and is identical with virtue. Perfectly at leisure and without pride, it is at home with harmony. The myriad things are all different but each suits its own nature. Its greatness combines the entire universe. Its virtue softens heaven and earth and harmonizes yin and yang, passive and active cosmic forces. It regulates the four seasons and harmonizes the five agents, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. Tao Te Ching, nothingness is used to denote the state that existed before the birth of heaven and earth. Reality is used to denote the state where the multitude of things begins to have all separate existence. Tao is so great that it is actually not to be named. But forcibly, it is the name Tao given to that which was originally nameless and simple. It is a creative force transcendent and independent of all things. It is the first cause and final destruction of the whole of creation. It is present in everything and yet at the same time above everything. Though small, the whole universe cannot subjugate it. It is the mastermind of all souls. 
Tao is the source of all creation which arises above all individual things and persons. Tao is the great truth. And the truth found in a human being is but his true self. True self is absolute purity of character, the original nature of man. Nature is what heaven has endowed in all things and what they have received from heaven. Original nature is an all-pervading perfection not contrasted with evil. This is true of what heaven has endowed in the self. When man acts in accord with it, there is goodness. When man acts out of accord with it, there is evil. Although the nature remains tranquil, but if we do not know how to preserve it, it will not attain the mean. Now, the nature should necessarily be cold and fire be hot. But the mean is sometimes not attained because man loses his original nature and beclouds it by habits engendered by material force. It is not that nature fails to attain the mean. Nature is the concrete substance of what man receives from heaven. The basic nature of all living beings, sages and ordinary people alike is equal. It is perpetual, perfectly still, and pure. However, the basic nature of an ordinary person is covered, like ore in a gold mine, whereas sages through practice, dig out from basic nature from deep down under the subjectively biased mind. The basic nature is Buddha nature. The common people have it in daily use but are unaware of it, with the result that the Tao of man of moral intelligence is seldom found. Whilst it is revealed in human heartedness, its functioning is in secret, stimulating the myriad creatures but without creating the anxieties which the sages endured. How prolific is the virtue of this and how great the achievement! The abundance of it is what is indicated by the term great achievement and the daily renewal of it by the term prolific virtue. It is impossible for ordinary people to be separated from the Tao for a moment. All men at all times have their feet on the way but the point is that they do not know that this is so. They are using it daily without knowing that it is the way. Amongst men, there are none who do not eat and drink, but there are few who appreciate flavors. The function of spiritual culture is to enable men to appreciate that the way is one which it is impossible for them to leave for a moment, to appreciate that their feet are at all times in the way, or to use a metaphor, to enable men to be aware of the flavor. The way, by its intrinsic nature, is one which cannot be left for a moment, man, by its intrinsic nature, at all times has his feet in the way. Speaking from this angle, there is no necessity for the way to be constructed, but speaking from the angle of man's conscious knowledge, the way does need construction. Unless there be spiritual personality, te, at its highest, the highest, result of, of the way cannot be consolidated. The man who fulfills all the requirements of his human nature, he possesses spiritual personality at its highest, that is the Tao at its highest, thus, although from the angle of ordinary following of the Tao there is no need of construction, from the angle of the Tao at its highest there is need. This way is what many men are already practicing, it is ordinary. It is also what they cannot leave for a moment, and therefore it is invariable. Sage men walk this road and also fulfill his highest requirements. Therefore, those who understand Tao returns to tranquility. Those who do not understand will have to bear the sufferings, worldly sufferings and the sufferings after death. They will meet with the cycle of life and death without end. 2. The Difference Between Tao and Religions Tao is the body of character that is the ultimate reality or source. The great ultimate is simply the principle of highest good. Each and every person has in him the great ultimate. 
The great ultimate is a name to express all the virtues and the highest good in heaven and earth, man and things. Tao is the divine intelligence of the universe, the source of all things, the life-giving principles, the relativity of all to the primeval one. It is the root and the path adjoining to eternality, and the gate to the secret of all life and death. The top secret of Tao was confidential during the early periods. If it is not with the command of our Heavenly Mother to spread Tao widely at this stage, no sages or gods themselves would dare to reveal its secrets. Hence, the great truth is not so easily apprehended by a commoner. When people think of learning the truth, they think of books. Books are only words and words, of course, have a value. But the value of words lies in the meaning behind them. This so-called meaning is but an effort to grasp at something and that something cannot really be expressed by words. Because the world values words, it preserves the books. But I do not value them, because what they value is not the real value of the books. What the eye can see are forms and colors. That the ear can hear are names and sounds. Alas! People think that from forms and colors and names and sounds, they can penetrate to the truths of reality. Since form and color and names and sounds cannot help one to penetrate to the truth of reality, therefore he who knows does not speak, and he who speaks does not know. A man with lopsided knowledge, observing only one corner of the Tao, cannot understand it. The result is that if he thinks he has an adequate understanding of it, his mind is thrown into confusion on the one hand, and on the other he misleads others. For those above to obscure the vision of those below, this is the calamity of benightedness. They shall never find the truth. The scholars of posterity unfortunately shall not be able to see the original simplicity of the universe, and the main foundation of thought of the ancient. The actual condition in men is to have a blind spot, and this is the cause of their inability and denials of the one school regarding as right what the other regards as wrong. The statement from every point of view are all capable of being statements of one or other aspect of the truth. From this point of view, the statements made are not in the last resort affirmable or deniable in relation to each other. The origin of right and wrong lies in the limited range of vision which each man has in viewing things. Because of this, every man has his one-sided view, his narrow conclusion. Not being aware that his view is so, he regards it as inclusive. That being so, the Tao is obscured. And not only is every man unaware that he is one-sided, he also embroiders the statement of his view in the hope that it may be regarded as having good ground for it. Thus, truth demonstrating speech is nowhere to achieve the Tao. The trouble generally is that they are selfish and rely on the use of their intellect. Since they are selfish, they are precluded from making their actions to be spontaneous responses. Since they rely on the use of intellect, they cannot regard their intuitions as something entirely natural. If we are led by someone who had the order of our Heavenly Mother to direct us the path, the way to the great truth, to open the right door, and to relate the secrets of Tao, no highly educated persons can ever unlock that secrets. Life energy comes from Tao, and bodily forms come from life energy, and thus all things of the creation evolve into different forms. Religions are actually outer boundaries of Tao. It is the power of Tao to give out its energy for their various activities. Things have their root and their branches. Affairs have their end and their beginning to know what is first and what is last will lead man to the way. Tao is root of the tree whereas religions are merely its leaves and branches. As seen, 
all religions are under the same principle one, one is the truth of heaven. Life springs into existence from one, without it nothing can proceed. All creatures and all forms have their source in the one. It comes from non-being. From non-being there is the one. Since we already call it the one, there is speech about it. The one in the beginning of calculation and the starting point of things. The Tao that can be comprised in words is not the abiding Tao. All things are produced by the Tao, and nourished by its outflowing operation. They receive their forms according to the nature of each, and are completed according to the circumstances of their condition. Therefore, all things without exception honor the Tao, and exalt its outflowing operation. This honoring of the Tao and exalting of its operation is not the result of any ordination, but always a spontaneous tribute. Thus it is that the Tao produces all things, nourishes them, brings them to their full growth, nurses them, completes them, matures them, maintains them and overspreads it. The object of religion is to teach men how to rid themselves of selfishness how to cultivate the sense of justice and how to sacrifice one's own interests and even one's own life to attain the goal of loving others and helping them. The collective wisdom of all world religions not only save ourselves from self-destruction but also reaffirm our determination to extend our love of brotherhood to all people on earth. Although the rights of the various religions differ, their principles are the same. Good deeds invite happy rewards and evil influences bring results of sufferings. He who attains such goodness will be rewarded with a comfortable and luxurious life in his next reincarnation. As such, all religions are basically the same for they teach equal principles. The sayings written in the sacred books of sages or holy man appear apprehensible, belong only to the common preaching. The truth can never be realized by a commoner since it is blindfolded by the knowledge of the surface. Unless led and taught by a teacher, messenger of God, and having attained the utmost realization, least of all wit and intelligence, no one is able to apprehend the profound secrets of Tao. Such is the difference between Tao and religion. Religion always exists but Tao appears only at the right time. Tao appears in form and disappears in formlessness. When it disappears, no wise men or even genius of the age are able to hear of it. It is because heaven has sent down calamities to get rid of all evil men, so the dawning of Tao is to save the good people back to where they belong. But religion exists even with or without the appearance of Tao. Teaching morality is the task of religion. The teachings of religion serve to lay out the path for one to the admittance of Tao later on. Therefore, the relationship between Tao and religion is inseparable. If Tao is separated from religion, the doorstep of Tao would be deserted. If religion is separated from Tao, then it is a false religion. Tao is the emancipation from the sufferings of reincarnation, whether in the form of man, animals, sea living creatures, or insects, returning to the place of utmost happiness, heaven, avoidance of befalling disasters during the course of one's life on earth, to redeem the sins we have owe, oh, others, the alteration of fate, and not to be churned into the world full of sufferings, i.e. to say a less happiness, repeatedly. Religion teach us the way of living, the doctrines of human principles, the practice of self-cultivation, the making up of a good citizen, and don the world with goodness by teaching man to repent his past wrongdoings and advert to goodness, and thus to lead an orderly life throughout. A man who does so will taste the good fruits of which he has ploughed. Such will be the necessary steps and preparation for the later admittance to Tao. Therefore, religion should not be left without.
Taoists hoped that believers of different religion would understand Tao is actually the root of all religions. From religion to Tao, one requires wisdom for the acquisition of Tao followed by the realization of the original self. When one realizes the place where he had come and the return after death, he would diligently tread his path and confident in reaching his ultimate destination. But the realization of his hope can only be achieved through self-cultivation and no other short ways. Those who have a head and feet but no mind nor ears, are many. Those who have a body without a body or appearance of one, and yet there they are are none. Movement and rest, life and death, rise and fall, are not at the beck and call of man. Cultivation of self is in his own hands. To be unconscious of objective existences and of God, this is to be unconscious of one's own personality. And he who is unconscious of his own personality, combines in himself the human and the divine. Tao similarly says the great ocean though vast and unfathomable, it does not distinguish between big and small streams, rivers, and regardless of clean or polluted water. For such of all these will have to flow to the big sea finally. Isn't it amazing to see water from different streams and rivers, whether clear or polluted flow into the great sea, mixed to become only one of the same form and taste. Since it is going to be the end of the world, Tao has to be widespread. So, Tao does not distinguish between people. Different human races, rich or poor may easily hear of it. The way of Tao has no favorites, it is invariably given to good men. The first impression Tao may gets from outsiders is a newly formed religion but which actually is not. It existed long before earth and sky come into being and is the originator of every creation. Although the principles and precepts of the five religions, namely Christianly, Islam, Taoism, Confucianism and Buddhism, are mentioned and discussed during sessions, we are actually drawing out the good points which are applicable and indispensable towards successful Tao cultivation especially at the initial stage. The heads or prophets of the above religions are successful Tao cultivators and had reached the perfect state of enlightenment and purification in ancient time but now because they are not given the permission by our Heavenly Mother to spread this precious Tao, it can only be hidden inside Bibles and scriptures etc. and is unintelligible to laymen. Only through Tao acceptance shall one come to realize the real significance of its very nature and the relationship with other religions. Religions are for the public as a whole but Tao is destined for those who had gathered virtuous and meritorious deeds in their past rebirths and are now ripe enough from Tao fruitions in present rebirths. An individual of the various religions who although may put forth the utmost possible effort in both study and practice of that particular religions, he still cannot attain the paths and the fruits of nirvana within this lifetime. He can only become a good spirit who dwelled blissfully in the sky for some few hundred years in his next rebirths. All that he can do now is to accumulate food habits and potentials so that he can emerge out again in future in time for Tao exposure and occurrence. The present modern sophistication of fast transport systems has broken the ancient religions and race isolation. This means now people can come into contact with each other more easily and consequently with the result of many religions being found in many a country. Nowadays, people go to everywhere and anywhere where there is advantage or that can answer his call or wished. All sorts of religions prevailed. Mislead people started to criticize each other's religions and there is resultant chaos. Instead, one should accept Tao wholeheartedly and realize that all religions are basically similar having their roots in Tao. Lao Tzu all things sprout luxuriantly and each of them turns back home again to its root. 
To be back in its root is to be what is called quiescent, and that means back again to a destined state. 3. The Relationship Between Tao and Man Every one of us has Tao, our original image but it is invisible, we do not realize it if it has not been explained. Tao is the root and its arcs are only its branches. When separated, it is the pulling out of its root and the loss of one's original source of nature. When it happens, then our life will be in danger. Tao is the root and the source of all life. Cutting off from the origin means the upbraining of its roots. Can the leaves be abundant when the roots have been pulled out? Will there be life then? The mean, all things cannot be separated from Tao. When it does, it cannot sustain for long. Tao is the truth. It is the only road which must be tread on by each and every man. Those who follows accordingly with Tao will be like a train traveling on rails, ships on water, like a plane soaring in the air. If a train does not travel on rails, ships not moving on water, and the airplane not traveling in the air, then they shall encounter danger. Therefore, man must not have selfish aims but act on those conditions that are in accordance with Tao by following the natural rules, commandments and precepts so that his body would be in equilibrium and harmony with those of heaven. If there are many malicious men around, then the resultant disaster will befall onto them. Such man when passed away shall be drawn down to hell where they will be judged and punished accordingly. They are likely to be churned into the wheel cycle and reborn into different forms of living things. Although life appears to be limited and impermanent, it is from the viewpoint of the basic nature, perpetual. In the past, there was no starting point, in the future, there will be no end. Birth and death are no more than putting on clothes in the morning after getting up and taking off at night before going to bed. When you wake up the next morning, you put on clothes again, and at night, you again take them off. The colors and styles of the clothes that you wear day after day may be different, but the wearer is still the same beginning of another birth. It is immense sufferings indeed. The foundation of virtue, te, exists ever since the birth of man. Without virtue, there was no survival. Tao and te is not acquired through knowledge. The way is not far from man, those who finds it seeks it. The highest knowledge of moral truth, Tao, comes to man from his constant practice of tranquil contemplation and inner reflection rather than from an investigation of the objective world. Self-culture is therefore the best way to develop completely one's original goodness, or regain it if it has been corrupted by desire and thus lost. Tao is the body of character whereas te is for use. Tao is our original nature whereas Te is shown in action. The nature with which heaven has endowed man is perfectly good without spot or blemish. The returning to simplicity is an artless freedom from all purpose, as characteristics of the man of Tao, such as he was in the primeval time. According to Lao Tzu's formula of doing nothing and yet doing all things, all efforts made with a purpose are sure to fall. The Tao in its regular course does nothing, for the sake of doing it, and so there is nothing which it does not do. The great man abides by what is solid, and eschews what is flimsy, dwells with the fruits and not with the flower. Thus he makes choice for the other. Conduct is the foundation of virtue, te. He who has learned how to venerate virtue and to rejoice in the truth, Tao, will then be perspicacious, pure, unsalted, and upright. When the confused are enlightened and have their minds opened, they are not to be distinguished from the people of great intelligence. Therefore, we know that when not enlightened, 
Buddhas are no other than ordinary beings. When there is one enlightened thought, ordinary beings at once turn into Buddhas. Therefore, we know that all multitudinous objects are every one of them in one's own reality. Why not, from within one's own reality, at once reveal the original essence of sainthood? If a person does not ascend a high mountain, he will not know how high heaven is, if he does not descend into a deep ravine he will not know the depth of the earth. Without going outside his door, one understands, all that takes place, order the sky, without looking out from his window, one sees the Tao of heaven. The farther one goes out, from himself, the less he knows. Confucius, if a man hears the way in the morning, he may die in the evening without regret. The way is the truth, which is not easily heard. Once the truth is learned, however, a man can die peacefully without regret. This underlines the tremendous value of truth. A man should rather sacrifice his life for truth than vice versa. In fact, so closely and important is Tao related to our bodies that without it, we will die and disintegrate. Because of ignorance, one tend to seek help and sympathy outside one's body which should in fact help himself by following diligently the principles of Tao cultivation and going against all obstacles and odds in order to achieve a high level of perfection. On these Shakyamuni Buddha said, to depend on others for salvation is negative, but to depend on oneself if positive. Dependence on others means a surrender of one's effort. The movement of pleasure and anger are a corruption of the Tao, trouble and grief are abortions of virtue, love and hatred are the failures of the heart, concupiscence and lust are the embarrassment of nature. Great anger destroys the negative force, yin, of man's nature, and great joy disorders the positive, yang. Great anger brings dumbness, great fear leads to madness, sorrow and grief passions and wrong desires obscure the eternal spirit of man and sensual pleasure and liquor would upset his body's equilibrium and harmony. Tao creates and dominates all visible and audible objects. Man is not exception and he holds correspond to the universe. Man has a pair of eyes whereas heaven has the sun and the moon. Heaven has the four seasons of summer, autumn, winter, and spring. Whereas man has four limbs. Heaven has the five elements, metal, wood, water, fire, and earth, the nine cardinal points and 366 days. These find a correspondence in the five main organs of the body, heart, lungs, kidney, liver, and spleen nine passages or orifices of the body and the 366 joints and branches heaven has wind, rain, cold, heat and man has the activities of giving and taking or reciprocity of feelings and emotions of joy and anger. The homores of the body are the wind and rain. Our eternal spirits bear the correspondence of the four elements of water, earth, fire and wind. The passway of a person also means the breakup of four constituents which would then blend with the earth again. Thus man, heaven and earth are mutually intermixed and interrelated. 4. The purpose of acquiring Tao Tao is the root of all sources and the original character of man. Although Tao dwells inside man, it is clouded by his own doing of liquor drinking, succumbing to temptation of beauty, competition and rat race for names and status, emotional weakness and blinded love, to name but a few. The age of our eternal spirit have been some 60,000 years old and our conscience is originally pure like those of newborn baby. However, as time passes, our mind have been bogged down with bad deeds and influences and our conscience obscured by wrong desires and insatiable wants. Man loses his character through the desire for fame, and knowledge leads to contention. 
In the struggle for fame, men crust each other, while their knowledge is but an instrument for scheming and contention. Mankind is living in a sea of sins but we are treating it as the garden of happiness. To their parochialism and self contrariness in outlook, Tao is practically non-existent. People who abnormally develop humanity, exact character and suppress nature in order to gain a reputation, make the world noisy with their discussions and cause it to follow impractical doctrines. People who commit excess in arguments, like piling up bricks and tying knots, analyzing and inquiring into the distinctions of hard and soft, while identities and differences, wear themselves out over vain, useless terms. In exchange for the material essentials of civilized life, man has lost certain essentials which are necessary for his peace of mind. Those who rely upon the arc, the line, compasses and square to make correct forms injure the natural constitutions of things. Those who seek to satisfy the mind by hampering it with ceremonies and music and affecting humanity and justice have lost the original nature of man. If man keeps his own virtue, the world will avoid deviation from the true path. The way is impeded in us. It is not far from man, those who finds it seeks it. But man having lured by earthly attractions were stubborn to recover their original nature and return to the original state. Those who lost their selves in material things and lose their original nature in the material world may be compared to people who stand on their heads. Acquiring the art of Tao cultivation is also means the art of preventing the eight earthly sufferings of mankind. Life may be very comfortable now. Most rich people of for example American have a comfortable material life, but one should not forget the fact that there are many sufferings which human beings cannot avoid. Furthermore, many people in the world are actually living in a condition not much better than that of hell. Examples of such sufferings are the war-torn countries and famine-stricken areas. Sufferings serve as alarms to stimulate one to search for liberations, so let us examine the different kinds of sufferings which changed very little over the long years that a human being experiences. 1. Sufferings because of birth. 2. Sufferings because of sickness. 3. Sufferings because of age. 4. Sufferings because of separation from loved ones or things one like. 5. Sufferings because of an undesirable confrontation with a person or things. 6. Sufferings because of death. 7. Sufferings because of the denial of one's desires. 8. Sufferings because of the burning intensification of human behavior, such as hatred, jealousy etc. It is regrettable that with all the progress in human cultivation, mankind is still unable to lessen or abolish the basic sufferings. In some occasions, sufferings are even intensified by the quickening of life's pace and the increase of material temptation. The commitment of evil deeds of man gives rise to the confronting great disaster. Man has been living in a world of sufferings since early periods. They were searching their way in the dark. The road which they originally come from is no more concerned as to fame and wealth. The way is the spiritual high road to the common existence and evolution of mankind. All men who walk this road, conforming to their instinct for existence, accordance with nature, will make it an integral part of their daily life, the way is not far from man. But this road is frequently in need of repair in order to keep it open and unhindered. That is why cultivation of the way is required. During the olden days, a young ascetic looking for truth will have to abandon his family. Shi Wei obtained Tao and so set the universe in order. 
Fu His, who discovered the principles of mutations of yin and yang, obtained it, and was able to steal the secrets of eternal principles. The Great Dipper obtained it, and has never erred from its course. The Sun and the Moon obtained it, and have never ceased to revolve. K and Pi, with a man's head but a beast's body obtained it, and rules over the streams. Qian Wu, a mountain god, obtained it, and dwells in Mountain Tai. The Yellow Emperor who ruled in 2698-2597 British Columbia, obtained it, and soared upon the clouds to heaven. The Western, Fairy, Queen Mother obtained it, and settled at Shao Kuang. Fu Yu obtained it, and as Minister of Wu Ting extended his rule to the whole empire. Nowadays, all living things spring from the dust return. Men regard as mortal that which is eternal, and consider as finite that which is infinite. Those who possess Tao are princes in this life, and rulers in the hereafter. Tao will lead you through the portals of eternality to wander in the great wilds of infinity. Those who do not possess Tao behold the light of day in this life and become clods of earth in the hereafter. 5. The Four Requisites of Tao Cultivation a. The Opportunity of Being Born with a Human Body Man is indeed very fortunate to have a human body and a brain capacity with which he can do all sorts of heavenly work and to spread Tao cultivation as widely as possible to brothers of the four seas. The body that one possesses is unreal, for it will disintegrate one day after death. No more will be seen of it. The soul is the only eternal existence. It is the soul that suffers after death. We must therefore make use of the flesh body, also the false body, to save the real one, soul. According to teachings, there are altogether five forms of existence and they are heaven dwellers, to which gods and good spirits belong, human beings, animals, ghosts and hell dwellers. It is interesting to note that we human beings actually have the best chance to obtain and cultivate Tao and to become a Buddha than the other four forms of existence. Hell dwellers, ghost and animal practically have little or no chance of getting it because of their self-insufficiency and limitation but why are heaven dwellers who are supposed to be at a higher level than human beings? The answer is that life in heaven is too rich with too many pleasures. A heaven dweller, so busy just enjoying life, has no inclination toward further cultivation. Only a human being who has the brain capacity to receive the teachings, who has suffered hardships and sorrows that serve as alarms to stimulate one to search for a way to be rid of those sufferings and above all possess the ability to cultivate and spread Tao. Also, various good spirits and deities possess certain powers which human beings usually lack. However the powers of these good spirits and deities are limited because they are also transitory beings. They exist in happy abodes and enjoy their life for a longer period than human beings. When they have exhausted all the good karmas, they shall reborn somewhere else according to the merit of their karmas. In this respect whether they are great or small, both human beings and deities are perishable and subject to rebirth. In some respects, animals are superior to us. Dogs have a keener hearing, insects have a greater sense of smell, eagle can see a greater distance. Undoubtedly, men are wiser, but men have to learn much from the ants and bees. Much of the animal is still in us but also have much more in us. We have the potential of spiritual development. b. The opportunity of being born a Chinese. Tao is just and upright, in absolute perfection, it is not one-sided discrimination. Tao is a direct path descended from heaven. The origins of Tao started in China. 
The word China means middle with regard to the world. Concurrently, in China a Kunlun mountain is situated right at the center of the globe. According to the principle of Tao, it is the highest mountain in the world, and also known as the roof of the world. Life spring into existence originally in China. Logically, Kunlun Mountain forms the link between heaven and earth. It is the location where the Heaven River flows down and unite with the Huanghe River at the foot of the mountain. The water from the Yellow River is said to be cleared for three days when a messenger from God is born on earth. Due to its structure in relationship with the truth, it is natural that the first man should be born in China. Therefore, China has the earliest civilization and cultivation in history. Each time when heaven sent Tao down to earth, the Chinese is always given preference to hear of it and to cultivate it. There is nothing peculiar because Tao started originally there. Hence, the Chinese race speaks more of morality. The Chinese is therefore, the most fortunate people to hear of Tao so much earlier than other races. See, the right timing of the third white stage. Ever since the birth of first man on earth, the total period has been divided into three stages. They are known as the green stage, the red stage, and the white stage. During the green period the people were good. They were as innocent as a white sheet of paper with no desires, greed, or hatred. It is named the green stage, because the people at that stage like green color. At the red stage, the hearts of man were gradually lured by earthly attractions. They started to kill for the greed of money. The people at that stage like red color. It was symbolized on wedding or any auspicious day where people like to dress themselves red. Now, it is the white stage. The hearts of man flared worst. Crimes committed by man of the white stage reached its climax. The heaven god was enraged. As a result, he sent down calamities to rid of all evil man. On the other hand, he cares for the good people. Thereupon, he sent Tao down to save the good people back to heaven. If it is not for the third stage, it is difficult for one to hear of Tao. D the chance of getting the real truth of Tao. At the third white stage, Tao is widely spread. The three difficulties which have just been mentioned can easily be solved. But the fourth many not be so. Though many chances are offered but those who acquired Tao and carry out self-cultivation till the end is like the morning stars. What causes this to happen? It was because of the numerous crimes they have committed in their past lives. They have owed too much of others. Thus they are obstructed or disturbed by their spiritual creditors, thereby depriving him of the chance to reveal himself to Tao. Others indulged in wine consumption, sensual pleasures, hot temper, money conscious or neglecting inner qualities. They are blinded by fame and love affairs. The root of Tao has been neglected. It is also because of the appearance of many outward religions. There are followers of these religions who do not follow the ethical code of conduct but make use of the reputation of certain gods to attract and obscure the wisdom of the people who only pray for advantages and wishes in return. False religion leads nowhere. Those who follow them suffer in the end, whereas those who had found the root became the enlightened one, Buddha. The most difficult to get in the world is a human body, and the most difficult thing a human body gets is Tao. Unless those who have a sound knowledge of Tao or the good deeds inherited from ancestors, it is indeed impossible to obtain the precious Tao. 6. The Advantage of Practicing Tao 
Man have creative power and the latent inconceivable possibilities to become a Buddha. The worthy cultivation of Tao is not placing of an unseen Almighty God over man who arbitrarily controls the destinies of mankind and making him subservient to a supreme power. Through the practices of Tao, one is taught that man can gain his deliverance and purification by his own exertion without depending on external or mediating priests. The gate to purification is open to all in every condition of life, high or low, saint or criminal who would care to turn a new leaf and aspire to perfection. We are all potential Buddhas. The difference between accepting or not accepting Tao is 108,000 miles apart. Man's spirit, as taught, is already 60,000 years old and he needs Tao to stop this cycle of death and rebirth. Below are the three advantages if one accept and cultivate diligently. A. Everlasting life. Life comes from a source and death is but a return to it. Thus beginning follows the end in a continual endless cycle. When a man is born, it is but the embodiment of a spirit. When the spirit is embodied, there is life, and when the spirit disperses, there is death. What we love is the mystery of life. What we hate is corruption in death. But the corruptible in its turn becomes mysterious life and this mysterious life once more becomes corruptible. For once coming into this material shape, it runs its course until it is exhausted. To be harassed by the wear and tear of life, and to be driven along without possibility of arresting one's career is not this pitiful indeed? To labor without cease all life, and then, without living to enjoy the fruit, worn out with labor, to depart, one knows not whither is not this a just cause for grief? The body decomposes and the mind goes with it. Is this not a great cause for sorrow? Human life in this world is but as the form of a white pony flashing across a rock crevice. In a moment, it is gone. Suddenly waking up, all life is born, suddenly slipping off, all silently creep away. With, one change, one is born, with another change, one dies. Living creatures moan, and mankind weeps. Remove his bondage, slip off its skin carcass and curling up, where shall the soul of man go and the body go with it? Is it perhaps on the great journey home? And how it behaved all of us who are mortal to think gravely of the future? since there are but heaven and hell for final resting places for all souls until the bitter round of life begins again and the good have their reward and the evil theirs also. The sufferings of mankind are so innumerable as to be unimaginable, changing from place to place and from time to time. They cannot be all listed, but let us roughly mention the major ones. That eight readily apparent. 1. Seven sufferings from living, I, rebirth, two, premature death, three, physical debilities, four, being a barbarian, v, living in frontier areas, on the fringe of civilization, six, being a slave, and seven, being a woman. Two, eight sufferings from natural calamities, I, famines resulting from floods or droughts, two, plagues of locusts, 3. Fire, 4. Flood, v. Volcanic eruptions, including earthquakes and landslides, 6. Collapse of buildings, 7. Shipwrecks, including collisions of cars, and 8. Epidemics. 3. 5. Sufferings from conditions of life, i. Being a widow or widower, 2. Being an orphan or childless, 3. Being ill without medical care, 4. Being poor, and v. Being humble in social station. 4. 8. Sufferings from human feelings, i. Stupidity, 2. Hatred, 3. Sexual love, 4. Burden imposed by others, 
v. Toil, 6, Desires, 7, Oppression, and 8, Distinction. 5, 5 Sufferings from being objects of honor and esteem, i. A rich man, 2, A man of high station, 3, A man of longevity, 4, A king or emperor, and v. A god, a sage, an immortal, or a Buddha. Gaining Tao acceptance also means fleeing from the birth-death cycle of six paths. Whatever path one is channeled into depend on the deeds he has performed during his last life. Good deeds lead to good existence and evil deeds lead to a miserable existence. They are presented as follows. A. Rich or high status people. B. Ordinary people. C. Life bearer for example horse, dog, and cat, but excluding human beings. D. Egg bearer birds and poultries. E. Creatures living in water for example fish and oyster. F. Insects. The degree and form of punishment one received in hell and the subsequent channeling into one of the six forms is determined by one's own deeds in the last life. The average age of human life, no matter rich or poor, is only about some 80 years. The miserable lives of the other four forms are also short, with Butterfly at the bottom of the list whose age is about a day to two. The cycle of change in the wheel of six paths shall goes on indefinitely, with the spirits being transfer from one realm to another depending on the order of merits done, unless the cycle is ceased and that is only by Tao acceptance. Therefore, life and death is not a pleasant thing. The world is not a good place to live in King Xian, I do not wish to be born but suddenly, was born, I do not wish to die but suddenly I was dead. The world does not secure one with an eternal life. The world is like a live hade come again and live in a world of sufferings. All living creatures in the world only aim at seeking happiness and avoiding suffering. They follow no other course. There are some who take a roundabout way, take an expedient way, or zigzag in their course, going through painful experiences without getting tired. They too, only aim at seeking happiness. Although men differ in their nature, we can decidedly say that the way of mankind is never to seek sufferings and avoid happiness. To establish institutions and manurate doctrines so as to enable man to have happiness but no suffering is the highest of goodness. Gautama Buddha was deeply disturbed and filled with compassion. He decided to go out into the world to look for the truth. Buddha Having been born in an age of disorder, and seeing with my own eyes the path of suffering in the world, I wish to find a way to save it. I have thought deeply and believe the only way is to practice the way of great unity and great peace. Looking over all means in the world, I believe that aside from the way of great unity there is no other method to save living men from their sufferings or to seek their great happiness. The way of great unity is perfect equality, perfect impartiality, and perfect humanity. If we wish to cease the path of death, we must prevent the birth of life. In Ail, we must first be lifted up from life and death. This, of course, is impossible without acquiring Tao. B. It can make one repent and advert to goodness. Only through Tao can one find back his original self-image. Thus, he will know that the hearts of man are of two types, the false and the real. One who does things and show concern for his flesh body is false. The thought of the commoners tend towards greediness and selfishness, and their acts are vicious and stumbling to others, more or less. These are not our real character, true heart. The real has been blinded by desires and pleasures. Hence, the real cannot reflect themselves. Man's nature is the concrete embodiment of the way. 
The way exists everywhere and we find it by simply returning to the self and discovering it within one's nature and function. In man, humanity, righteousness, propriety and wisdom are his nature. As they possess these principles, many deeds are carried out, and man is enabled to have the feelings of commiseration, shame, defense and compliance, and right and wrong. But man use the false heart of theirs to do things. This is the reason why we need to acquire Tao. All ideals are just like a dream or like clouds floating in the sky which come and go without leaving any trace behind. Accept only those habits that are considered good and discard those that considered bad. Our thinking and consideration must be based and be guided according to what is taught in Tao teachings because it is truly just and straight. No matter how intelligent a person proclaimed is, he does not always make the right decision. Our brain is of stubborn nature and refuses to accept the fact that our senses are faulty. This is because the information continuously and consistently fed into the brain by the sense organs is so incomplete. Therefore, even though you understand what I said at this moment, the next moment you forget or discard it completely because your eyes and ears give you an entirely different picture which your brain habitually accepts as the true picture. Cultivating Tao will help us to develop right understanding clear thinking, loving-kindness, compassion, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, honest and a set of moral values. c. Protection from disaster. Man creates his own disaster. Having lost their original character, they acted ravishly. Man's mind is more treacherous than mountains and rivers, and more difficult to know that the sky. For with the sky you know what to expect in respect of the coming of spring, summer, autumn and winter and the alternation of day and night. But man hides his character behind an inscrutable appearance. The evil deed of man give rise to the descending calamities. Examples of such are, floods, famines, fire, earthquake, cyclones, war and airplane crashes etc. A person who has obtained Tao will understand the reason to the descending of disaster from heaven. The only way to prevent the heaven-made disaster happening on us, it to cultivate Tao earnestly. The performance of good deeds is to wash away our sins. The accumulation of good deeds is necessary because we need to settle the debt we have owed others for the long six million years, life and death cycle. If a man is virtuous, pure in heart, wise and possess strong will power, then such a person is much stronger than demons and evil spirits and they have no chance to harm us. While the evil spirits keep away from him, good spirits protects him. With these occurrences, a person's fate can slowly be changed because his past vices and evil deeds is being dissolved by his present virtuous and meritorious actions. 7. What is the third white stage disaster? Sky and earth are changeable and as such there will be a beginning and an end. The life cycle of the sky and the earth from the time it is created by our Heavenly Mother to the time of its doomsday will take a total of 129,600 years. It is subdivided into 12 periods, each period consists of 10,800 years. The sky is created during the first period, earth the second and man the third. After the seventh period, everything will be subjecting to gradual destruction and so it is the turning point. Man will be destroyed in the ninth period whereas in the tenth period the whole earth will be under complete destruction. The eleventh period saw the sky being destroyed and in the twelfth period, both the sky and the earth will be totally disappeared. The propagation of Tao on earth could be categorized into three stages namely the green stage, Qingyong period, 
the Red Stage, Hyung Yung Period, and the White Stage, Pak Yung Period. During the Green Stage, there were only nine disasters, the numbers is small because during that time, mankind were most humane and decent. At that time, Tao was only given to kings and ministers of the state. Out of the 96 billions of original souls, only two billions were saved. The god appointed by our Heavenly Mother to take charge of heaven during this stage was Lian Teng Buddha and in the affairs of Tao, Hak He Buddha. The Red Stage save another two out of the 94 billions being saved by Shakyamuni Buddha who was in charge of heaven and Nato Buddha who was in charge of Tao. Now, the White Stage was controlled by Mate Raya Buddha, Laughing Buddha, who is in charge of heaven and Chekong Buddha who is in charge of spreading Tao. This last stage shall see a total of 81 numbers of disasters, the worst amongst all the three periods because by now, man's heart have deteriorated. Our Heavenly Mother has altogether created 96 billions original souls and were sent down on earth. Not only does it include man but also of all animals, the four-legged animals, sea living creatures and insects etc. Four billions souls have been saved and now 92 billions still awaiting to return to where they actually belong. These four billions original souls on seeing their brothers still being trapped by earthly pleasure and sinful deeds, are reluctant to return to heaven, mercifully pledged to come down in the birth of human to save the remains. Disasters are created by human themselves because whatever sinful deeds committed are bounded by the laws of karma to have certain repercussion on them and this can be found mainly in this white stage. Man's body is constituted two modes of cosmic powers, negative yin and positive yang. We existed in between the two extremes of the planes of miseries which have much yin forces and the planes of sensual pleasure and happiness of the heaven which have much yang forces. The aims of Tao cultivation is to get rid of those yin forces which are able to change his fate for the worse and drag him down to hell to be punished and to be taken rebirth in other miserable planes of existence. In an area where there is extensive accumulation of yin forces, disastrous actions would occurred. This is because the built-up forces of yin would collides with that of yang in heaven which being more powerful, is able to destroy the yin constitution that results in a widespread of disaster and catastrophe on that part of the earth. Examples of such disasters are volcanic eruptions, disease epidemic, locust plague, fire, flood, drought, collisions of ships, cars, and aeroplanes and lastly wars. The end of the white stage makes the beginning of the Earth's doomsday. There shall be widespreads of disaster everywhere, darkness shall prevails and the whole world would be in chaos. Hell's gate shall be opened and all devils shall be let loose to take revenge on those who are indebted to them. Only those who are good and have cultivated Tao earnestly would be spared. Mate Raya Buddha would come down and bagged those spiritually good beings up to heaven to enjoy eternity bliss there. The White Period is also sometimes referred to as the, the Nuclear Age because at the ending period, all living things on earth shall be wiped out and dissolved by the action of wind. This disaster is known as Yen Kong Hong Kiep. After that the whole earth and the sky would be destroyed. The planning and organization at the closing stages shall be done by Sun Suba Buddha. Our merciful Heavenly Mother has specially given order for Tao to be spread to all so that everybody shall have the opportunity to repent and purify themselves during this white stage. However man's conscience have been obscured and get deteriorated. It is not easy to convince the people because man has sinned so deeply. Those who practiced Tao will lead a quiescent and everlasting life. Those who have given in their efforts to Tao will be paid for their merits, 
regardless of the society status, or of God, human, animals or ghosts. It is a golden opportunity once in every 129,600 years. It is the only chance to the achievement of the precious Tao. 8. The Systematic Spreading of Real Tao The real order of Tao is in accordance with the real order of the superior God. In the green and red stages, Tao is spread from one person to one person, from one generation to the next. Fu House, Mythical Emperor 2853 British Columbia is the first to discover the mutations of yin and yang. From then, Tao is given its first starting point. Fu Shi is the first master. He spreaded Tao to Shen Neng, the second. The third master is Xian Yuan, Shao Kan, fourth, Rei Xian, fifth, Emperor Titanium Kao, sixth, Emperor Yao, seventh, Emperor Shun, 8th, Emperor Yi, 9th, Yi Yi, 10th, Shan Tang, 11th, Tai Kung Hunag, 12th, Emperor Wen, 13th, Lao Tzu, 14th, Confucius, 15th, Zhuang Tzu, 16th, Xi Shi, 17th, Meng Tzu, 18th. After Meng Tzu, Tao is brought to the Eastern. Gautama Buddha obtained it. He becomes the first master in the Eastern to obtain Tao. He spread it on to Chia Yeh, second, Anan, third, Shan Na, fourth, Yui Por Mao Tor, fifth, Titanium Ter Chia, sixth, Li Sher Chia, seventh, Por Shui Mi Tor, eighth, Fo Tor Nan Titanium, ninth, Fu Tor Mi Tor, tenth, Xie Chun, 11th, Fu Na Ye, 12th, Ma Ming Tar, 13th, Chia Bai Lo, 14th, Lo Huo Lo Tor, 17th, Lung Shu, 15th, Chia Na Titanium Por, 16th, Sheng Chia Na, 18th, Chia Ye Shi Tor, 19th, Her Lo, 20th, Chu Ye Tor, 21 Th, Por Shui Pan Tio Yu, 22 th, Mo Hu Lo, 23 th, Hermi Na, 24th, Shi Ji, 25th, Por. Sher Ji Tor, 26th, Bulletin Russia Mi Tor, 27th, Pan Lo Tor Mi Ta Ji, 28th. Tamor attained the 28th position in the Eastern. He had the order from the superior god to bring Tao back to China. At that time, China was under the reign of Emperor Liang. Tamor spread it on again to Sheng Kuang, second master after the recovery of Tao in China. The third, Sheng Zhan, Tao Xing, fourth, Xian Ren, fifth, Hui Neng, sixth, Pai Ma, seventh, Lo Wei Chen, eighth, Wang the Huai, ninth, Wu Qi Xiang, tenth, Hu Lian Ku, 11th, Yuan Tian, 12th, Yang Huang Shi, 13th, Yao He Tian, 14th, Wang Chui Yi, 15th, Lo Qing Shi, 16th, till here, it is the ending of the white stage. Laughing Buddha, Mi Li, obtained it and became the first master of the white stage. Yu Hui Pei USA and Che Kong, the second master. Tao is now widespread at the start of the white stage. 9. The Secret Spreading of Precious Tao Tao appears and disappears without showing its form. When Tao appears, one cannot see its root, when Tao disappears, one cannot see its concrete forms. Heaven has sent Tao down to save the people. The messenger from the Supreme God received his order and thereby divulged the secrets of Tao and lead us to the recognition of our spiritual root. If our Heavenly Mother does not give her order, no one, including gods and Buddha, would dare to reveal its secrets any further.
therefore, anyone in search of the truth should make full use of the opportunity. Unfortunately, those who take it lightly will suffer great loss and bear sufferings for another 129,600 years. Admission to Tao acceptance is by recommendation only and any casual visits by the outsiders are generally discouraged. The acts of praying and paying respect to gods are taboos to the view of outsiders and it is done in a style fitted only to our all-supreme Heavenly Mother and the following hierarchy of gods. The three secrets given are to be treated to the utmost secrecy because whatever leakage done would face the livelihood of death within three to one hundred days. Tao is too precious to be taken lightly. Any creation and occurrence on this earth can be made possible by the supreme control of our Heavenly Mother. Our earth is created by her sole effort. So as said, anyone who sincerely and faithfully accept and cultivate it, one day will arrive when he would be bright, and reached Nirvana, a Pali term which means he has achieved complete enlightenment, complete wisdom and perfect compassion. In other words, anyone can become a saint, a sage, or a Buddha whom so many worshipped for so long a historic time. The truth and the reality of Tao is not represented on paper. Although Tao is mentioned in other religious holy books of Quran, Tao Te Ching, Buddhist scriptures, Confucius classics, and the Bibles, it is hidden and unintelligible to those who have not accepted Tao before. It is a secret that can only be unveiled by a messenger of God after Tao acceptance. The fact that it is so important that when wrongly spread to evil people or demons, it will cause harm and disturbs the peaceful tranquil of the people. Any person who purposely make known either with evil intention or with adulterated ideas or in a way likely to cause bad public sentiments towards Tao spreading, is bound to be punished by the actions of thunder and lightning. It should be secretly spread because it contains many outcomes and secrets which outsiders should not know. In fact, it is so important that over 2000 years ago when Shakyamuni Buddha was spreading Tao to his disciple Chiyaya, he used his robe to cover the action from the sight of a third person. A person's livelihood and thinking must not be conceited and based on science alone because it bogged and narrowed the mind. Those who cultivate their abilities in mere worldly studies, hoping thereby to recover their original nature, and those who confuse the desires of their minds and worldly thoughts, hoping thereby to reach enlightenment these are people seeking for his real image and universal truth. Science is the experimentation of material truth while Tao cultivation confines itself to moral and spiritual truth, the searching for the real image of Buddhahood. Through proper development of his faculties, one is capable of knowing his past lives and the thoughts of other people anticipates modern experiments in the field of brain waves. 10. The Steps After Tao Acceptance during the early periods, a person who wished to obtain Tao must isolate himself from home. But now, at the third stage, Tao is widely spread. Our Heavenly Mother has sent down many immortals to aid in the spreading of Tao. Employed to conduct oneself, they brought harmony and blessing, and employed to deal with others, love and impartiality. Employed to cultivate the Tao they gave peace and harmony. For example, when they spoke of the full development of human nature, they mean the complete realization of the moral principles of the three bonds, between ruler and minister, father and son, husband and wife, and the five constant virtues, that is, righteousness on the part of the father, love on the part of the mother, brotherliness on the part of the older brother respect on the part of the younger brother and filial piety on the part of the son, covering the relationships between the ruler and ministers and between father and son. 
When they spoke of nourishing they mean that one should nourish these moral principles without doing anyone harm. This control truth runs through the most subtle principles and the most obvious facts, with nothing left uncovered. It is not necessary to abandon one's family and went desperately in search of Tao, as in the green and red stages. Every member of the family can obtain and practice Tao cultivation together. Now, man can cultivate Tao and at the same time engaged in his own affairs. Neither of each is a hindrance to the other. It is the mercy of our Heavenly Mother that we can at any time practice Tao cultivation. Accept Tao wholeheartedly with the right discipline for morality, concentration and wisdom and one is on the road towards self-purification and enlightenment. Poor financial background, low status, low education and heavy manual occupation are no hindrance in gaining recognition from Tao acceptance and cultivation. Everybody enjoys equal privilege and opportunity. Our merciful Heavenly Mother accepted our human's livelihood in the twin roles of half work and half cultivation performed by man. This means one can now devote his time and energy in the Tao cultivation and at the same time engaged in an occupation of his choice. That is the reality of our modern world for man believes in sustaining and earning his own means of livelihood. An able-bodied person cannot just like in olden days begging in the streets for food because police might detain them for the reason of being a social nuisance and incapable of caring after oneself. Confucius, fishes live their full life in water, men live their full life in Tao. Those that live their full life in water thrive in ponds. Those that live their full life in Tao achieve realization of their nature in action. Hence the saying fish loses itself is happy in water, man loses himself is happy in Tao. Besides disciplining and improving oneself on aspects of right words, thoughts and deeds one must not forget those who are still in sufferings. Spreading Tao as far as possible is the responsibility of every Tao cultivators. Both inner and outer qualities must be on the guard. Spreading to many and as wide as possible is the fundamental aim in this last white stage because heavy movements of saintly spirits traffic would distract and repel evil spirits and demons. Tao must be spread at even the slightest opportunity to others in order to create an atmosphere and a wider exposure for more keen and congenial listeners, thus paving the way for more newcomers to Tao acceptance. Clinging steadfastly to the golden thread of Tao by frequenting the religious venue and hearing preaching means one is well informed which is essential in the progress of Tao cultivation. In this way Tao shall flourish with the subsequent creation of peace and harmony and a sense of brotherhood amongst man. 11. Meritorious Presentation in the Cultivation Merit, or that which purifies, cleanses the heart of evil while strengthening what is beneficial and skillful. Intrinsically it is a fountain of happiness and hence can also be defined as that which is profitable. Heart is the root of all meritorious actions but can be also the root of all demeritorious actions. Demerit can be defined as the possession of resultant fruits from evil unskillful actions, greed, aversion, delusion and hatred, whether these are expressed by way of the door of the body, the door of speech or the door of the mind. It leads one into entanglement with the world and to the accumulation of sufferings. Merit, on the other hand, is derived from all those intentioned actins whether of body, speech or mind, which leads one towards freedom from the world and away from the bondage of desire and suffering. Many people ignorant of the true ways of gaining happiness only go for sensual pleasures but time will come when they will actually find themselves suffering. Through non-violence and loving-kindness to all sentient beings, 
man is able to see the extinction of mental defilement and consequently, be less bound by them. In this way, he who has developed and extend a compassionate feeling towards all sentient begins, including the animals, is sure to accumulate a lot of merit their form. Slow and steady accumulation of merit is just like drops of water falling into pot which will sooner be filled, he should find pleasure therein, for the accumulation of merit brings about happiness. Benevolence and righteousness also are in the nature of man. The accordance with nature is the way. Men must see the vital importance of benevolence and righteousness, and act accordingly. This means we must cultivate the way and learn how to establish meaningful relations among ourselves. The object of taking these roads and keeping them repaired is the love of men. The superior man, in learning the way, loves man, way is cultivated by cherishing benevolence. Therefore, the focal point of the way is benevolence. Where there is benevolence, there is the way where there is no benevolence, the way is lost. The root of benevolence lies in filial piety and fraternal love. When extended beyond love for relatives it becomes benevolence to all people. And when extended still furthers it takes the form of kindness to all living things. He, who using virtue, practices benevolence is an exponent of the way of right. Only the way of right is submissive to heaven and responsive to the people. The practices of this way is destined to bring about peace and order in the world. From the cultivation of the person to the pacification of the world, all the necessary steps originate in justice. They start with complete sincerity, carry through with the search for benevolence, and are consummated in earnest practice. The way is the spiritual high road to the common existence and evolution of mankind. All men who walk this road, conforming to their instinct for existence, accordance with nature, will make it an integral part of their daily life, the way is not far from man. But the road is frequently in need of repair in order to keep it open and unhindered. That is why cultivation of the way is required. A road which was not cultivated is not possible. And so is Tao. If Tao is not cultivated, then the way back seem forlorn. One needs to perform meritorious deeds in the course of Tao cultivation. The performance of meritorious deeds is the only way to diminish the burden of evil deeds that we have owed others for the past six million years. Without it, Tao cultivation is not complete. There are altogether three types of meritorious presentation. They are as follows. A successful cultivator must not be arrogant, jealous, hot zero-tempered and with a desire for rivalry. There should be justice in dealing with others and not biased. One should encourage the feeble, unite the divided, enlighten the ignorant, clarify the mystic, guide the benighted and dignify the noble. Respect must be given to all gods, elders and senior people alike. Without killing or causing injury to any living creatures, he should be kind and compassionate towards all, even to the tiniest creature that crawls at his feet. Slaughtering of animals for sacrifice purpose is not allowed. B presentation of character. One should possess good and magnetic personality, be courteous, cautious, neat attires, thrifty, modest, condescending and a keen and wholehearted desire of selfless service towards God. Do not underestimate or bully others. Equanimity or adapting to others so as to gain respect and affection their form. C presentation of speech. One should be abstinence from falsehood, slandering harsh words malicious tale-telling and gossips. The bereaved should be comforted. 
Excessive careless talking may create unintentional harms to others but instead more energy and effort should be put into the spreading of Tao. Merits can also be accumulated by the followings. 1. Respecting one's superior. 2. Helping others or making oneself beneficial to others. 3. Listening to useful teachings. 4. Giving useful teachings. 5. Sharing one's merit with others. 6. Writing wrong views. 7. Following moral code of conducts. 8. Mind development leading to real wisdom. One should set a good example and a source of inspiration for others to follow. A minimum degree of right understanding is necessary at the beginning to give the right motivations of cultivation, maturing into perfect intuition. 12. The comparison between the sage and the ordinary. What the world values are wealth, rank, a long life and goodness. What people enjoy are good health, rich food, fine clothing, beauty and music. What they hate are poverty low position, dying young. What people worried about is that their body should not be in good health, that they might not be able to taste rich food, put on fine clothing, see beauty, or hear good music. When they cannot obtain these things, they are plunged into deep sorrow and worry. Such attendance to the externals is foolish. The rich hustle and bustle and hoard up wealth. Their method of attending to the externals of life is undependable. When a man is born, sorrow comes with it. Life comes from a source and death is a return to it. Thus, beginning follows the end in a continual endless cycle. The only way to stop this cycle is to accept Tao. All products in the world are results of refined and beautiful material force. Man takes the best of it to nourish his life, but it is all from heaven. So, do not let the artificial submerge the natural. Do not for material purposes destroy your life. Do not sacrifice your character for your fame. Guard carefully your nature and do not let it go astray. This is called returning to one's nature. One who attains Tao sees perfect beauty and feels perfect happiness. Happiness and anger, joys and sorrows, should not enter one's heart, for this universe represents the unity of all things. When one perceives this unity and is united with it, he regards his bodily form as dust of the earth, and the cycle of life and death but as the alternation of day and night. He cannot be disturbed by such accidents, much less by the occurrences of fortune and misfortune. He shakes off an official position as he shake off dirt, knowing that his self without allowing it to become lost in external changes. For the process of change going on in all things is continuous and endless. He who does not deviate from the source of all things is a man of God. He who does not deviate from the essence is a divine person. He who does not deviate from the truth is a perfect man. He who regards the heaven as the source. Tao as the foundation, and Tao as the portal, which is evidenced in all changes of life is a sage. He who guides himself by the principle of humanity in performing acts of kindness, follows justice as his principle, observes ceremony for his conduct, expresses the sense of harmony by means of music, and thus becomes compassionate and kind, he is a gentleman. The sage rests in the solution of things and is dissatisfied with what is not a solution. The common men are satisfied with what is not a solution and do not rest in what is a solution. The man of perfect character cannot be burnt by fire, nor drowned by water, nor hurt by the cold of winter or the heat of summer, not torn by bird or beast. In nourishing his nature, the superior man acts naturally as if nothing happens, 
but that does not mean that he lets things take their own course. Instead, he acts so as to make the best choices and remain firm in holding to the mean, and dares not go wild or make careless mistakes. Those who understand Tao must necessarily apprehend the eternal principles and those who apprehend the eternal principles must understand their application. Those who understand their application do not suffer material things to injure them. 13. Virtuous Practice and Wisdom Cultivation One must possess both inner and outer qualities. The outer quality can be cultivated through the performance of virtuous and compassionate service to others while the inner quality can be cultivated through self-development in conduct and moral restraint leading to intuitive wisdom. These are merely the fundamental requirements in the art of successful to cultivation. Both the qualities must go hand in hand and are equally essential, for the lack of one will render the cultivation in disequilibrium and is considered incomplete. Altogether 3000 number of virtuous service and 800 number of wisdom are required in order to achieve that goal of complete purification. For virtuous service, one must perform 1,000 number of heavenly service, 1,000 number of earthly service and 1,000 number of material assistance, charity giving, and it is presented as follows. A. Performance of material assistance. It is the compassionate giving of material assistance to those needy and poor. Any surplus of food and money from us are of great help to those unfortunates who have had not enough. Performance of social work by helping in the collecting and channeling of money and material for homes of the aged or relief clubs, or by helping in the mending of bridges and roads for the society, are also a form of meritorious deed. b. Performance of earthly service it is the channeling of effort towards the encouragement of bad and ignorant people to become good and accept the teachings of rightful Tao cultivation. Whatever bad things or vices done in the past is already past and it is always not too late to turn over a new leaf. Encouragement must also tee those who have been an active cultivator before but had somehow backslided. The generous donating of money for the printing of holy books for others to read is also highly commendable. One have to comfort the bereaved by consoling words, ministering to the sick that were deserted, purifying the corrupted lives of criminals, encouraging the feeble, and also enlightening the ignorant. C. Performance of Heavenly Service it is the channeling of money and effort towards the spreading of Tao and in the maintenance of worship venue. The place have to be tidy at all times. A lot of time is also required for entertaining, organizing of preaches, ceremonies and other formalities concerned. It should be realized that heavenly work in the white period is of utmost importance because this is the last stage and as such even gods and sages are being reborn on earth or by getting themselves into mediums so as to help speeding up the spreading of Tao. Internal assistance is the putting of effort into the managing of the worship venue by attending to ceremony, preaching and encouraging newcomers, cleaning the place giving financial aids and other general daily duty. External assistance is the putting of effort and time in spreading the Tao to other country. Places where human helps is insufficient, for example in preaching and managing of ceremony, modest and selfless service should be extended to there regardless of whether it is small or elegantly big. I shorts Precious Tao must be spread to more people so that they too can benefit from this worthwhile cultivation the more people, the more peace will be the place. 14. Rules and Regulations in Tao Cultivation In a country, the government has his own laws and policies. Likewise in a family, there is also an ethical code of conduct to follow. Unexceptionally, Tao has its own set of rules and regulations too. 
If one abides and follows it accordingly, one is able to achieve perfection in the long run. We should always follow the rules and regulations set by our Heavenly Mother. Those who are first informed should instruct those who come later, and those who first apprehend the way should instruct those who are slower to grasp it. This is one of man's responsibilities. For example, water flows downward from high places till it finds its level, electricity is transmitted from high to low voltage till a balance is struck, when heat and cold are mixed, the former helps warm the latter till the same temperature is reached. It is the way of heaven to be altruistic and collaborate with others in the performance of good. When those who first apprehend the way instruct those who are slower in learning it, they practice the way of heaven and accelerate the progress of mankind. We must aim at the highest goal, be far-sighted, strict mannerism, setting a good example for others to follow, be merciful, good personality, just and patient, respectable to elders, and be humble all the time. Do not speak evil words. Do not hurt the feelings of others. We must endure all hardships and sacrifices. Avoid worldly entanglements, adopt vegetarian diets, advocate loving and helping others, practice self-denial, exhort good conduct, inhibit killing, curb avarice and counsel a healthy attitude. We must distinguish between the demons and be acknowledgeable to Tao. Be patient during the hard times of Tao cultivation. Only in this way can goodness be continued, nature fulfilled, virtue achieved, and the way cultivated. The basic principles of Tao cultivation is also shared and bared by the principles of Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism. All the above religions have the same objective of teaching the people to do good and to purify their eternal spirits. The ethical codes of conduct formed by Confucius, Lao Tzu, and Sheikh Yamuni must act as the guiding principles for Tao cultivators and it is presented as follows. A. Confucius The Five Cardinal Principles 1. Benevolence 2. Righteousness 3. Propriety 4. Wisdom 5. Sincerity. The Three Bondage Principles. 1. People must be loyal to their ruler, ruler must be just to his people. 2. Son must be filial to his parents, parents must be responsible to his son. 3. Wife must be devoted to her husband, husband must be faithful to his wife. B. Lao Tzu. The Five Constituents Preservation Principles 1. The Element of Metal 2. The Element of Wood 3. The Element of Water 4. The Element of Fire 5. The Element of Earth The Three Purity Principles 1. Vital Fluid 2. Creative Energy 3. Spiritual Essence C. Shakyamuni The Five Commandments 1. Do not kill animals 2. Do not steal 3. Do not commit adultery 4. Do not tell lies 5. Do not drink liquor The Three Precepts 1. We should respect the sages 2. We must learn from the sages. 3. We ought to carry out the teachings of the sages. The moral code of conduct of the above three sages which although are different, it bears the same ultimate objective of spiritual purification. First of all, we should abstain from meat and liquor in order to have wisdom and preserve the element of water. Moreover, we should not indulge in sex in order to preserve the principle of propriety and the element of fire. Furthermore, we should not kill animals so as to preserve the principle of benevolence and the element of wood. 
In addition, we should not cheat others in order to preserve the principle of sincerity and the element of earth. Finally, we must not steal in order to preserve the principle of righteousness and the element of metal. Tao is merciful to all, even to the notorious but repentable man. We must pay careful attention to the rules and regulations of Tao for it is the real path helping us to reach the state of complete enlightenment. When we have reached that state of perfection, not only do we enjoy eternal life but also the rewards granted by our Heavenly Mother. By observing the rules of propriety and practicing righteousness, we hope to be worthy of our ancestors. 15. Bitterness creates Buddhahood. Tao cultivation is initially resting on the privet of sorrow and bitterness. It is neither totally pessimistic nor totally optimistic, but on the contrary, it teaches a truth, the great truth of Tao that is able to put an end to the temporary bitterness once and for all. Ordinarily, the enjoyment of sensual pleasures is the highest and only happiness of the average man. The hearts of the world are captive of a happy and splendid life. What they detest most is hardship. So, they struggle and compete amongst themselves for wealth fame to ease their materialistic heart. But such happiness is elusive and temporary. Even the richest man has his own sorrows. Nobody can escape from world bitterness and sufferings except through Tao. Take an example of a rich man's son who had never tasted hardship since the day he was born. Spoiled and pampered, he indulged himself in pleasure entertainment. Soon the time came when he had spent all his money. His friends were no more his friends. They deserted him one by one. His happiness disappeared in a flash of light. Now he is left with unbearable sorrows. Another example of powerful personality such as the kings and ministers are also no guarantee to lasting happiness. An act of coup d'etat or an assassination attempt may finish them off. Any immoral or corrupted case may leave behind bad names. In other words, the higher one climbs, the heavier he falls. So, what happiness does man has? We should realize that wealth and fame is not everlasting. Real happiness is found in our own hands. It is not defined in terms of wealth, honor, or fame. If such possessions are taken forcibly or unjustly obtained, they will be a source of pain and sorrow to the possessors. Instead of trying to rationalize suffering, one must take suffering for granted and seeks the cause to eradicate it. Examples of such seeking and eradication are Sheikh Yamuni Buddha, Goddess of Mercy, Confucius, and Sheng Kuang Buddha. Sheikh Yamuni Buddha was brought up in the lap of luxury, but his contemplative nature and boundless compassion did not permit him to enjoy the fleeting material pleasures of a royal household. He knew no woes, but he felt a deep pity for sorrowing humanity. Amidst comfort and prosperity, he realized the universality of sorrow. The palace with all its worldly amusements, was no longer a congenial place for the compassionate prince. Realizing the sanity of sensual pleasures in his twenty-ninth year, he renounced all worldly pleasures and donning the simple yellow garb of an ascetic, alone, penniless, wandered for in search of truth and peace. It was an unprecedented historic renunciation, for he renounced not in his old age but in the prime of manhood, not in poverty but in plenty. He made a superhuman effort for six long years, avoiding the two extremes of self-indulgence and self-mortification. The former retards one's spiritual progress, and the latter weakness one's intellect. At the age of thirty-five, he eradicated all defilements, purified himself, and realizing things as they truly are, attained enlightenment. 
Goddess of Mercy is another example of renunciations and seeking the course of salvation for mankind. Born a princess, she also seeks the course to the people's suffering. One day, while in the palace garden, Tar Mor Buddha approached and taught her the art of Tao cultivation which she followed accordingly. She suffered much bitterness under the tests of her father, the emperor. Ten years later, she also reached the state of perfection and became a Buddha. In Tao cultivation, one is taught about what is suffering, the cause of suffering, the cessation of suffering, and the path leading to the cessation of suffering. It prevents a person from being materialistic and it also prevents a person from being thrown into sand despair if he happens to meet with repeated failures and disappointment in his life. The believers in the law of karma which state that good effects are produced by good actions and evil actions bring about evil results, gives one the strength of will and energy in counteracting the evil influences of vice with the good influence of virtue. Through firm heart and patient, a day will come when the result will bear fruits and he will enjoy the consequent fruitions of what he has done. A person on reaching the state of perfection, a notice shall be sent down to inform him of the successful news. At the end of white stage there will be a grand gathering called Long Watai Hu where all purified souls shall celebrate together with our Heavenly Mother of the fruitions done and one is able to enjoy blissful eternity. 16. Personal Conduct in Tao Cultivation To be on the right path all the time, one must learn the rules and regulations by heart. Heart is the root of everything. It can build hell and it can create heaven. We are the architects of our own fate. We are faced with a totally ill-balanced world. We perceive the inequalities and manifold destinies of men and the numerous grade of beings that exist in the universe. We see one born into a condition of affluence, endowed with fine mental, moral, and physical qualities and another into a condition of abject poverty and wretchedness. Through the law of moral causation, we reap what we have sown. What we sow we reap somewhere. In one sense, we are the result of what we were, in another sense, we are not totally the result of what we were. For instance, a criminal today, may be a saint tomorrow. Tao is unbiased and the route to the attainment of Buddhahood. Learning the rules by heart is just like implanting the root of Tao into the domain of subconsciousness. Obey it all the time and one is on the right track to the state of purification and perfection. A. Heart 1. Filial and obedient to parents 2. Subjects of the states should be loyal and humble at heart. 3. Ready to help the poor and needy. 4. Be passionate to those who are in difficulties. 5. Do not be greedy or jealous of one's possessions money, wealth, and fame. 6. No evil thoughts arising from sensual pleasures. 7. Do not be jealous of others' talent. 8. Do not blame yourself or hate others for being so much better than you. 9. Always be honest and upright. 10. In whatever you do, do it with sincerity. B. Personality. 1. Wear clean and neat attires. Regulate your dress carefully to show dignity and respect. 2. Perfect yourself morally and set a good example. 3. Facial expression be firm, walking and sitting be straight and upright, respectful and well-mannered, thinks before talking, calm and works according to position. C. Talking 1. Do not boast of your wealth and act arrogantly. 2. The highly educated must not underestimate others. 3. Speak in low voice with respect to the seniors and elders. 4. Polite and chivalrous in front of ladies. 
5. No one-sided talk on behalf of money. 6. Do not blame yourself in poor living. 7. Speak the necessary words and keep the excessive by remaining silence. 8. Patience is the antidote for curing anger. 9. Do not exaggerate or speak the untrue. 10. Do not tell lies. 11. Do not boast of yourself. 12. Do not criticize others. 13. Speak the subject matter and not loosely. 14. When you speak, speak with trust. 15. Be alert of what you are speaking. 16. Do not indulge yourself in imagination. 17. Do not create falsehood. 18. Do not be stubborn on your point of view. Persons who wish to perfect their knowledge must not be conceited or self-deceiving. The self-deceptionists regard themselves as arbitrarily in the know, when in reality they are not. The conceited frequently are content with what in reality they are not. The conceited frequently are content with what they have acquired. They have no desire for further progress and so rest calmly in their state of vulgarity, ignorance and inferiority. Thus points to the reason why the serious inquirer must be humble at heart. Confucius, I do not know how a man without truthfulness is to get on. How can a large carriage be made to go without crossbar for yoking the oxen to, or a small carriage without the arrangement for yoking the horses? 17. Progress in Tao Cultivation While a person progresses with regulated behavior and setting a new set of values in the course of cultivation along the path of Tao, it is not smooth but fills with various obstacles. The obstacles are either created by Asu Lo whose duties is to test us on the creditability of our Tao performance or created by the ghosts whom we are indebted. The testings of Asu Lo include the creation of trouble and disruption that is able to deviate one's interest and attention to commit an act that is against the law of Tao cultivation. Clear thinking, understanding, and tolerance have to be when one encountered such a situation because it is merely a test with which one have to pass in order to achieve a higher state of personal advancement in the cultivation. Examples of such a test are the creation of family quarrels, works disruption, sickness, accidents, time scarcity, temptation and teachings of adulterated ideas by false religions teachers. Ghosts whom we are indebted may come to find us at this stage to hinder our progress in cultivation. But why Tao cultivation in this state? It is because an ordinary person without Tao cultivation is just like a penniless beggar who owed others a lot of debt. Since he owes others money, they would not find him to return it because he is already broke. However a person who is keeping Tao is just like earning more and more money and as such his creditors are likely to bounce on him for their debts. Through patience and tolerance, one's debts shall steadily be cleared and the excess merit shall represent light rays for his body's halo. Right understanding of Tao is essential. Any succumbent to false deeds and deviation may activates the imbalance of one's body forces of yin and yang which in turn creates the backslides of one's Tao cultivation. Rules and regulations must be carefully observed so that demons shall have no chance to demoralize us to commit evil deeds which results in our downfalls. Concentrate on Tao principles and not to deviate our attention onto another religion at the same time is important because one pair of feet cannot step on two boats and it can result in one's failure. Tao cultivation is to make worthy sacrifice of time, money, energy, status and position. Money and human body are useful servants if properly controlled and to us these are only of temporary nature because till death do us apart. 
who have not died before. Sage Lao Tzu taught us to be calm and firm no matter what turmoil outside is. Just like on the ocean or in a cyclone, it is the midpoint that is the most peaceful although the surrounding engulfed is turbulent or even disastrous. One should neither go to the extreme behavior of happiness, anger, sadness, love, ferocity and craze nor attracted by sensual pleasures of color, sound, smell, hearing, touch and fashion trend. Neutrality and simplicity is the main criteria for a peaceful mind. To be a vegetarian is essential for successful Tao cultivation and it is presented by the following reasons. 1. By having a merciful heart. 2. By following the rules of non-killing and eating the flesh of our brother, relatives, and friends. 3. By not churning into the birth-death cycle of the animal realm. 4. By not having high blood pleasure, high cholesterol level, which may result in a heart attack. 5. By having a good temper, understanding clear, and conscience pure. Confucius said, there are five steps of practicing the Tao extensive study, thorough inquiry, careful reflection, clear discrimination, and earnest practice. During the advanced stage of Tao cultivation, one is able to develop the five supernormal powers divine eyes, divine ears, the reading reminiscence of past births and different psychic powers. It must not be understood that those supernormal powers are essential for sainthood. In order to make improvement all the time, one must withstand all laughs, bombards, physical punishments and other forms of endurance as come across without fuss so as to be on the right track of the path set by our Heavenly Mother to the uppermost heaven where everlasting tranquility and happiness reigns. HTTP www.taolibrary.com slash categury85.aspx HTM 20191002https://www.taolibrary.com/categury85.aspx.htm.htp.www.taolibrary.com/category/c-a-t-e-g-o-r-y-53/c-53019-htm number http://www.taolibrary.com slash category slash c-a-t-e-g-o-r-y-53 slash c-53026 htm number htm6592019102 http www.taolibrary.com slash category slash c-a-t-e-g-o-r-y-53 slash c-53016 htm number htm 867-2019102 http slash slash www.delibrary.com slash category slash category 53 slash c53009 htm number htm http www.taolibrary.com slash category slash c-a-t-e-g-o-r-y-52 slash c52005 htm number http www.taolibrary.com slash category slash c-a-t-e-g-o-r-y-13 slash c-13031 htm number http www.taolibrary.com slash category slash c-a-t-e-g-o-r-y-90 slash c-90002 htm number C89007 HTTP www.taolibrary.com slash category slash categuory89 slash c89007.pdf
HTM 20191002 HTTP www.taolibrary.com slash category slash CATEGORY52 slash C52036.htm 854 HTTP www.taolibrary.com slash category slash CATEGORY90 slash C90012 HTM number 58 HTTP slash slash www.delibrary.com slash category slash category 85 slash c85001 htm